Hey everyone, welcome back to Nintendo Prime, and I got a bunch of stories for you today. I, I was just going to do one story for this video, but holy crap, we have some updates to some older stories. Uh, but let's start with Nintendo Direct. Do you know, it's been 162 days since our last general Nintendo Direct. This has the internet going crazy and conspiracy theories, and obviously we still have the rumors of two Directs today. Well... Something interesting happened, and it's likely nothing. Uh, the Nintendo Direct official playlist on Nintendo's YouTube channel has been updated today. Now, of note, it's weird because there's some strange gaps. It says there's 21 videos, but like the Nintendo Direct from 2, 13, 19 has been suddenly deleted or sent to private, and that could constitute an update to the list. So maybe all they did was privatize some older Directs, but why would they privatize one from last year uh, when this year, some people are theorizing there's going to be one tomorrow. Uh, last year's general direct that happened on 2 13 19 actually happened on 2 14 uh, 19 in Japan. So people are theorizing that maybe we're getting a direct tomorrow just to throw off the whole Nintendo. Every direct is like on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, but Honestly, at this point, I think people are just wishful thinking. We all really, really want a Nintendo Direct to happen soon. Some people wonder if maybe uh, if there was a Direct plan for either late last month or this month, that maybe it's been delayed because of the coronavirus outbreak, which has now been renamed to something more scientific-y. Uh, but yeah, I'm honestly, at this point, uh, no one knows when a Direct is coming, so your guess is as good as mine. All right, next up, we're going to be talking about some E3 stuff. Uh, first off, this is just kind of a general note about E3. Uh, Jeff Keighley, I don't know if you guys know him. He's the one who runs the Game Awards. Uh, he used to work at Game Trailers doing some stuff. He's hosted Game Awards shows over the years. I've uh, been the host of the E3 Coliseum event for the last few years at E3. He will not be attending E3 for the first time in 25 years. Uh, E3 has been going on for, I think, 25 or 26 years, so this will be the only E3 he's ever missed. And the reasoning he's given for not attending is that uh, he basically tells people, you need to ask the, the ESA about it, or the E3 committee, uh, what he's seen so far behind the scenes. He doesn't like the direction of the show. Now, E3 itself has had a lot of issues over the years, especially lately, trying to figure out what it is. Because E3 used to be an industry event uh, that would sometimes get some, some TV shows on G4 TV back in the day, uh, but would, would get streams online and stuff from IGNs and GameSpots and all that, Nintendo Treehouse, obviously, lately. And the thing is, the event went from being where only media members could go to opening up to fans, and this was just due to kind of demands uh, from Sony and other companies that really wanted it to be more of a fan event, uh, but they never fully committed to the fan event mantra, and it kind of led to um, a mismatch of media, uh, industry insiders, and fans all in one venue, which just ends up being chaos. And as someone who has attended last three of the last four years, it is pretty chaotic in there, and it's always been chaotic, but it's even worse now. Uh, and they're trying to ease it up by this year by making the very first day the show floor opens is going to be media only, uh, maybe industry in insiders as well. And then the last two days will be open to everyone. Uh, and they're making the Gamer Pass cheaper because of it. It's dropping from $250 to $160. But to be honest, um, it still feels confusing as to what this event is. This isn't like PAX and Gamescom where it's open to everyone and it's always been that way. This was an industry-only event or an industry insider event that is trying to transform into something else and it's not doing a good job at it. In my opinion, E3 probably should have just stayed as an industry insider event because it was the only major video game event of the year that was industry only in the first place. But uh, at this point, they were trying to give in to the demands of publishers and, and uh, platform holders, and they just didn't do a good job of it. Now, speaking of E3, and as much as it's going to be sad to see Jeff Keighley not participate in E3 for the first time in his career... Nintendo is attending E3. Yesterday we wondered if Nintendo was attending E3 because they were not out on the first exhibitor list, which are people who are actually going to have booths on the show floor. Nintendo wasn't listed. Uh, but actually it turns out that Doug Bowser confirmed back in January with an interview with Hollywood Reporters talking about how, you know, they're... You know, they're sad that Sony's not going to be there, but we feel it's a great venue for us and all of that, and we will be there this year. Uh, so Doug Bowser technically already committed to E3 back in January, and we just kind of all forgot about it because when the exhibitor list comes out and it doesn't have Nintendo listed, you're kind of like, huh, maybe Nintendo backed out. So they committed in January, maybe backed out. Well, the ESA made an announcement late yesterday in wake of all of us talking about, you know, other outlets as well, talking about how is Nintendo going, what's going on? Uh, they came out and announced all of the uh, currently confirmed attendees, which does include Microsoft and Xbox, and did include Nintendo. So yes, Nintendo is attending E3, 
as usual, we could expect the digital event, the Treehouse Live stuff, uh, you know, great presence on the show floor and all that. So Nintendo will be at E3 this year, E3 2020. There are no changes to Nintendo's current plans on how they're handling that event. And to be fair, Nintendo has handled E3 maybe the best over the last handful of years, as, as people were wondering about shifting and changing. Uh, Treehouse is widely considered one of the greatest live shows during E3. Uh, not that Nintendo needs to be at E3 to do a show like that, but they don't really have, they have other Treehouse live streams throughout the year. None of them seem to capture that E3 magic. So maybe Nintendo thinks the whole uh, mantra or the whole atmosphere around E3 with fans and everything uh, just really helps uplift what they're doing and maybe helps inspire their employees as well to be a bit more energetic, even though it's got to be pretty tiring to work for Nintendo and work the hours they work during E3. Um, so yeah, Nintendo's going to be there. That's good news. That's great news. Um, you know, it makes my decision on whether or not I'm going to E3 this year even harder uh, because I've gone uh, three of the last four years and Nintendo's obviously a big thing what we do at Nintendo Prime. So I'm not, I'm not sure at this point. Um, I, I will have to talk it over with Eric, and I'll get back to you guys because um, it's going to affect how we cover E3, uh, whether I'm doing it from home or whether I'm doing it there. There's other reasons I might want to stay home that have nothing to do with the event. Um, but anyways, we'll get into that more in the future. And our last story today uh, is one where I get to eat a little bit of crow. <laughs> um, you guys remember when I put up that video talking about how, oh, there's microtransactions in Animal Crossing uh, New Horizons, and oh, uh, yesterday I said Animal Crossing New Leaf, by the way, correction, I meant New Horizons, New Leaf, New Horizons, get rid of the new part, it's confusing me, Nintendo. Well, the ESRB rating that had in-game purchases listed on the official website has been removed. So there apparently, at least at this point, are no in-game purchases inside Animal Crossing New Horizons. Of course, this also supports my theory that in-game purchases didn't include the Nintendo Switch Online service. Because uh, I kind of tried proving last time that that wasn't part of it. And people were like, oh, these games have it. But the games that have it also have other things. Uh, so it, I honestly think that um, Animal Crossing New Horizons, at least at this point, has no announced um, microtransactions, no announced uh, DLC or anything, and maybe that's why it was removed from the website, or it was just a mistake, an honest mistake, and the Nintendo employee may have been putting up the ESRB ratings, and that wasn't actually in there from the ESRB, and there's not going to be any in-game purchases, and crisis is averted. Um, at this point, uh, I don't know what to think. <laughs> um, I obviously uh, made some mistakes in that video anyways. I said some things about Fire Emblem Three Houses that weren't exactly true, uh, and I'm fully willing to admit when I've, I've made some mistakes in my reporting days. Uh, I've made mistakes in the past, and I'll probably make mistakes in the future. I'm only human. Um, in reality, I, I should have did a little bit more research on each individual game. I thought I had such a strong argument already that I didn't need to do that. And there were other reasons that I think there might be microtransactions inside Animal Crossing, such as pretty much everything Animal Crossing related since New Leaf has microtransactions of some type in it, even if it's Amiibo Festival where you have to buy individual Amiibo. Uh, but... I didn't bring that stuff up. I didn't bring up how the ESRB ranks in-game purchases, what their exact definition of it is, because in-game purchases is not a Nintendo thing. It's an ESRB thing. Uh, so there's that as well that I didn't bring up. I did bring it up in the comments on why, as, as evidence as to why I believe it means microtransactions. And then there was someone on Twitter who, who tried to explain to me the difference between DLC and microtransactions and how it's tied to your account or, or, or always downloadable in the future or all this different stuff. Um, I'm still of belief that microtransactions come down to the raw definition of what a microtransaction is, which is just a, a, a small purchase made online in some form for something. Um, and then obviously what the definition of small purchase is, is varying from people. Is 10 bucks a small purchase or is it like a dollar? You know, it's, it's kind of up in the air. Um, at this point, I am just going to rescind <laughs> my comments from that video for now. Uh, right now, there is no in-game purchases listed for Animal Crossing uh, New Horizons. So based on the new information, we had assumed there's no microtransactions. There's no in-game purchases. Uh, we do know that the Nintendo Switch Online service will be required to do any online stuff with it. But apparently, that's not considered an in-game purchase. So um, yeah, I was wrong. At least wrong for now, until, unless it's announced in the future. Um, or unless in-game... There's a thing. Like, they removed the one thing that pointed to it so uh, at this point then it's just speculating there might be microtransactions but um, there's no actual evidence to suggest it now so I was wrong it happens go ahead and burn me at the stake I guess maybe maybe I'm really just a witch what makes oh. you think she is a witch well she turned me into a newt a newt I got better 
Burn already! Burn! Anyways, folks, I am Nathaniel Robojets from Nintendo Prime. I want to thank you so much for tuning in. Again, I hope you're enjoying this new format. Um, some people actually commented uh, yesterday that, hey, is this like the Prime News thing? I could replace it with Prime. I don't really know. It kind of has that Prime Newsy feel because there's more than one story, but not always. Sometimes there's only going to be one story. Um, I've just been playing around with my different formats because I do have this huge studio that I've barely used you guys have seen me essentially for a while at least the last few weeks use my portable green screen which is off to the side over here uh and then uh just do myself sitting in my office chair reading stories with the story in the background and i and i do like those style of videos um time to time and i'm not gonna say those styles will never come back there'll be times when i don't have time to set this all up because to set this up i've got one two three four uh five lights running right now to set this all up and that's um it, and i gotta move my lights because i don't have extra lights so sometimes this isn't gonna happen but um i like this i, I like using this desk it used to be the podcast desk i like using it i like using the script i like the green screen back here sometimes maybe, maybe sometimes i'll take the green screen down because i do have like a nintendo-esque background behind it um, and obviously you guys, some people really like the discussion videos where I'm sitting in front of the gaming collection as well. So I've been reading all your comments and, and taking them into consideration. And you know me, I'm always playing around with formats. I'm always playing around with what I want to do. Um, and as long as I'm making something I'm proud of, uh, something that I think is worthwhile and I'm reporting on things and talking about things I think that interest you, I'm going to keep, uh, playing around and experimenting. Uh, if that makes my channel inconsistent, I guess I really don't give a crap. Um, Maybe that's just what my channel is, an inconsistent mismatch of Nintendo news and discussions. Uh, but I apologize for misreporting in the past. I'll try to do better in the future. Um, hey, Nintendo's going to be uh, at E3, so that's great as well. Uh, Jeff Keighley's skipping. That sucks. Nintendo Directs. When are we getting them? Oh, Nintendo. All right, folks. So like, subscribe, leave a comment below. In fact, let me give you uh, 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 something to answer down below. What is your most anticipated Switch game that we're aware of, whether it's indie, third party, or first party, second party, etc., this year that has not come out yet. What is your most anticipated? Let me know down in the comments below. Anyways, folks, like, subscribe, hit that bell icon, and I'll catch you in the next video.